We're here at CES 2018 and a special demo behind the scenes at LG to talk to Neil Robinson about an exciting new feature which is auto calibration which they've presented in conjunction with Spectracal. So I started by asking Neil exactly how this new auto calibration feature works. Yeah, so at a high level, the main change that we've made this year is to move from a UI-based auto calibration process, which is what has gone before from other manufacturers, to a hardware level uh, calibration process where the software, um, Calman is the partner that we're working with, the software um, directly communicates with the TV at a hardware level. And so for, for the, uh, the grayscale adjustments, that would be a 1024.1D 1 lookup table. And for color, that would be a 33 cube 3D lookup table. That's 36,000 points of adjustment, as opposed to the traditional 20 points for grayscale in a traditional system, or in a color management system, usually six primary and secondary color adjustment points. So what is the advantage of taking a direct approach? There are a number of advantages. Of course, the size of, of the number of adjustment points is much larger, um, but and flexibility. We can choose to, for grayscale, instead of evenly spaced, like 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, we can choose to adjust at 1%, 2%, 3%, 5, 7, 9. Um, but there's uh, perhaps slightly less obvious is the fact that in a UI-based approach, there are multiple settings that are all influencing this same 1D lookup table. You could have things like the, uh, the white point setting, the gamma setting, the two-point grayscale, the 20-point grayscale, and then in the factory menu, there's additional settings. All of those settings are kind of merged together and uh, in some cases fighting with one another to build a 1D lookup table. Um, and what we're doing is effectively ignoring all of those settings and just directly accessing the lookup table on its own. Um, what approach are you taking in terms of delta errors? So we, uh, Kalman offers multiple options for that. The default in the workflow at the moment is to use Delta E2000 for SDR um, and Delta ICTCP for HDR. The, uh, there's a separate setting in Kalman that uh, allows you to choose what Delta E target you're using for the AutoCal process. So that's different from the reporting. It's more as you go through this iterative process of uh, calibrating the grayscale, where do you kind of say, okay, I'm good enough now? Um, and for that, we're recommending uh, either Delta ICTCP or uh, a, one of the settings in Calman called Delta E2000 AB, which puts more of a focus on uh, color, particularly at the low end. Delta E2000 has a, something of a limitation where um, the shadows can be very off in terms of color, but your Delta E number is still very good, and we like to avoid that. How do you go about actually connecting the software to the TV? So that's all over IP. Uh, it works with Ethernet and Wi-Fi. All of the testing that I did during the development of this feature, um, I did with Wi-Fi just because my laptop didn't have an Ethernet jack. Um, and we never saw any problems with um, latency or issues of connectivity, and that was even on a corporate network with hundreds of machines. Um, that's pretty significant for uh, custom installers or people, even home users, who've got their TVs mounted where it's difficult to get to the cables. Having to plug something in is kind of frustrating. So usually now we're in the era of smart TVs. They're connected to your network, so you don't really need to plug anything in. Um, it's secure in that when you start the process, Calman um, sends a command to the TV. You first tell Calman the IP address of the TV. Calman sends a command, you get a little pop-up with a pin number, which is uh, like a random number, eight digits for that session only. You type that into Calman, and then um, you've established a kind of temporary pairing session, and then all the data is encrypted between the two devices during the calibration session. And uh, other thing to say is, of course, it's very fast. Loading a, a 33 cube 3D lookup table over serial could take minutes. Uh, you know, uh, there are some devices I've used uh, in the past that take like 15 minutes to load a lookup table. For us, a 33 cube LUT takes about a second or half a second. So it's all very, very fast. So how quickly could you do a very accurate calibration using the AutoCal feature? So a grayscale calibration would probably take somewhere between two and four minutes and a color calibration using a new feature that Calman added which is called a matrix LUT. It's basically a 3D lookup table that's um, it's implementing a 3x3 three three matrix in a 3D lookup table. It requires only four measurements, so it takes 11 seconds. So the whole thing may be five, six minutes, something like that. Very, very fast. And which picture modes does this feature work on? So for, for SDR, it's cinema, uh, both ISF modes that we have. 
um, the Technicolor Expert mode and the game mode. And I believe game calibration of game mode is an industry first. Um, and there's, by the way, no limitations. It's not that you can only do grayscale for the game mode. You can still calibrate the 3D LUT and the, and the uh, uh, 1D LUT in that mode. For HDR, it's HDR Cinema, HDR Technicolor, and HDR Game Mode. And for Dolby Vision, it's Dolby Vision Cinema, Dolby Vision Cinema Home, and Dolby Vision Game. So it's a total of 11 different picture modes. And also HLG as well, is that? So uh, when I mentioned um, the HDR modes, that includes HLG. And actually, um, I realize you didn't ask the question, but it brings me on to another point about how do we calibrate HDR, and that will explain the answer to that question. So in 2017 TVs, we pioneered uh, Dolby Vision calibration that used uh, an approach where you switch off the tone, tone mapping, color volume mapping, and you effectively calibrate in 2.2 gamma space. Um, Tyler Pruitt, who helped with the work on SpectraCal, he described um, calibrating HDR in a PQ or HLG space as trying to make adjustments by poking something with a rope. Because you've got something in between you're, you're adjusting a 1D lookup table that's operating in gamma space, and then you've got all this processing in front of it, and you're trying to do things through that. Um, and so for HDR this year, we have added that same feature. During the calibration process, you switch off the processing, calibrate gamma, and then you switch it back on to validate. And to answer your question about HLG, the difference from a hardware perspective between HLG and HDR10 is just the processing that mapping, that color volume mapping that's happening upstream. So if you calibrate HDR10, you have calibrated HLG. Do you still need to use a USB thumb drive to validate the settings? No, so with Dolby Vision, we brought that kind of, so for HDR10 and HLG, we brought them up to speed with Dolby Vision for this 2.2 gamma approach. And then we brought Dolby up to speed with uh, the rest of the calibrations by making the grayscale automated and this configuration file that we used to require a USB key. Uh, now that data is sent over IP as well. So is this AutoCal feature the same on all of this year's OLED TVs? So the only difference for the uh, different ranges within the OLED um, series is, is the, the C and up, which is the C8, the E8, the G8 and the W8, all feature a 33 cube 3D lookup table and that's due to them using the Alpha 9 processor. The B8, uh, which is the, low, the entry level OLED, um, uses the Alpha 7 processor, as do all of the Super UHD LCDs, and they have a 17 cube 3D lookup table. And, and where will this feature be available? So, uh, it, it, this is not vaporware, it's not uh, pre-production or uh, prototype. Everything you see here is already in the software builds that, that will be in the TVs when they launch. TVs themselves are launching in February, March time. Um, Calman, uh, it will initially be a beta version, and it's not beta in a sense that it's not feature complete. It's just that uh, Calman has a annual upgrade cycle that they work to, and our TVs come out before they're due to do their annual update. Um, but from their perspective, I'm sure they would like me to tell you that it's available in the enthusiast version, uh, all the way up through all of the versions that they have. So. Even the uh, enthusiast version, which is their, their lowest priced offering, uh, does support all of the AutoCal features that we're demoing. Well, it all sounds very exciting, and thank you very much, Neil. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you.